team who've been tireless workers setting this up. Thank you, thank you. Couldn't have done it without all of you. You really make a big difference. We're here not to grieve Chris, but to celebrate his life. That is what he wanted, that's what he asked for. We want to celebrate his life and all he meant to us. Chris, or CJ as he was known to many, um, he was kind, he was generous, he was funny, and above all, he loved people. He loved all of you, and thank you for returning that love and coming here to be with us today. He was also a very complicated man. Anybody who spent much time with him may have recognized that. So today we're going to say our farewells to him in song and story. We're going to have a lobster bake. And for those of you who don't want seafood, we've got you covered. Don't worry about it, please. <laughs> he specifically asked for a lobster bake once he knew that his time was near. He's like, this is what I want. So that's the reason that we're all gathered here today. He was very clear, as only Chris could be. So. Once I finish speaking, his daughters Sasha and Genevieve will say a few words. His brothers in song, the Vintage 13, will come and sing the two songs that Chris requested specifically. And then Sasha and Genevieve will have a ceremony to release Chris's spirit into the river. This, by the way, if you don't know, is the Damariscotta River and flows out into the Gulf of Maine. Following that, we're gonna have open mic time while we all eat. So if you have stories to tell, songs to sing, um, experiences you wanna share, the floor will be open. Just be polite. Don't all jostle for the mic at once because I know there's gonna be a lot of stories. And in respect for everybody else, be mindful of time. Keep it short and sweet, all right? Chris and I had 13 years together, an auspicious number for those of you who know, <laughs> and some of the happiest years of my life. We shared many, many adventures, a few arguments just to balance things out, <laughs> and he lived and died on his own terms. I'm grateful to have been able to share the last days providing him with comfort and care, just as we shared life's adventures and fun. I love you, Johnson. And now I'm going to turn things over to Sasha and Jen. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, thank you all for being here today. For those of you who I haven't met yet, I'm Chris's daughter, Sasha. And since October, I've had a lot of time to think about my dad and to witness the ways in which he continues to show up in our lives, like in the Red Cardinals today and the Great Blue Herons. It gives us opportunities to laugh and remember. I love all of those moments. They keep him alive for me and for my family. As we drew close to this event today, I sat with the question of how to remember him with all of you. How do you weave the threads of our individual relationships over 75 years into a collective ceremony? For the record, Dad would love that we're gathered here to remember him today. He would also have a few choice words for me, quietly under his breath, for standing here and beginning to talk about how wonderful he was and how deeply impactful his gifts have been and will continue to be for me and for all of you. But Dad and I took great pleasure in rousing each other just a bit and every so often, so I'll continue today. Dad had a unique and almost magical way of bringing people together to create a sense of belonging in a moment in time. He opened invitations to share stories, to sing together, to break bread. It didn't matter who you were or where you were from, he brought you in just the same. He showed up for whatever needed to be done and he did it in a quiet, humble, and largely unobtrusive way. For those of you gathered today, we're here because that is the embodiment of a life lived. Some of you I've known for years and some of you I've met for the first time just a few minutes ago. Our common thread is that Chris landed in our lives and in a moment you knew you could count on him. Dad was loyal and he was sturdy. And as much as he loved a great party and a concert and a little naughty joke here and there and time with friends and family, he also answered the call when someone needed an ally in their corner. 
It never seemed to matter how complicated the situation, he was there. For decades, he quietly joined friends and family to honor their traditions, to build new ones. He found love, he played music, he mentored the, this generation and the next and the one after that. He listened to troubles and tunes alike and read stories until he was the one falling asleep. And as many of you know, he never missed an opportunity to jump into rich socio-political sparring matches, <laughs> always remembering to leave with a hug or a handshake. So after we share food today and songs and stories and we go our separate ways, I know dad would ask all of us to make room for each other, to stay curious, to look for the things that bring us together instead of the things that can tear us apart, to be kind and to remember if you lose your way, listen to the music play. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I was uh, humbled by the task of coming up with my own words to speak to all of you today. Um, and in the honor of my father who taught me how to make meaning in this world, it seemed like music was the most appropriate way to do that. So I am going to sing for all of you a song from Billie Holiday uh, and try to do it justice. I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places in everything my lovely heart embraces all day through in that small cafe the park across the the children's carousel, the chestnut tree, the wishing well. I'll be seeing you in that lovely summer's day, in everything that's bright and gay. I will think of you that way. I'll find you in the morning sun And when the night is through I'll be looking at the moon But I'll be thinking of you would like to pay respects to Chris. There's a wreath over here with his uh, signature hat. Feel free to wander by there before it goes overboard. <laughs> 